לחיות או לא יחיות. ההיא השאלה. To be or not to be, that is the question. Let's take a quick peek at the verb haya. To exist. Haya. Now, the presence of the A-class vowels affixed to the first and second radical And that just simply means that when we look at haya, we have a tri consonantal, meaning three consonants that form the root. Haya. They are he, yod, he. Haya. And the A class vowels affixed to the he and the yod, representing the first and second radicals, respectively, are our greatest indication that we're dealing with a call or G stem which says that it is a simple active verb. Haya, he existed. Haya, so the A-class vowels indicate the presence of a simple active verb being conjugated in the perfect tense. This is a third masculine singular perfect conjugation of the verb haya, which means that he existed. Now, if I want to conjugate this verb to reflect an imperfect tense, it will sound like this eh yeah. so the change in its form what we call the morphological change the change in appearance will often be accompanied by a morphological excuse me a phonological change the change in sound they go hand in hand as we start changing its look it changes its sound okay morphology the change in appearance phonology the change in sound haya versus eh yeah. So haya is a third masculine singular perfect simple active verb meaning he existed. Ehia is a first common singular imperfect conjugation of the verb meaning I shall exist. Now textually putting this into context we can look at the Shemot narrative or the Exodus passage. Um, how about... Um, we can start at verse 14. Moshe. Asher This is kind of like an F of X equals X statement, meaning that it is as it does. What goes in is what comes out. Asher And what we have before us textually is a first common singular imperfect conjugation of the verb haya, meaning to exist working in conjunction with a substantive particle relation or particle of relation. Usher, meaning that or which. It could also be used for who or whom. Okay, a relative particle. So, I shall exist as I shall exist. And the vocalization pattern indicates to us that this is a simple active verb It's not causative. It's not passive. It's not intensive. It's a simple active verb. I shall exist. Asher. As. I shall exist. So if I was having this conversation with the deity and the deity identifies itself to me in the first person because it is a first person, second person conversation. It is talking to me and it is identifying itself saying that I shall exist as I shall exist. So as I take this information and disseminate it to another group of people, I will be compelled to express this in the third person. And I will say, hey, I had a conversation with the deity and the deity told me that it shall exist as it shall exist. Now, I do have the ability to convey or quote directly. And it would sound like this. If my brother says to me, hey, I shall exist as I shall exist. I would say, and my brother spoke saying, I shall exist as I shall exist. Now, that is just utilizing a direct quote. However, if I am not utilizing a direct quote and I'm simply expressing the value of that attestation, I will not utilize the first common singular imperfect conjugation. 
I will utilize the third person masculine singular imperfect conjugation of the verb haya. And it sounds like this. Yehye, it shall exist. Yehye ashar yehye, it shall exist as it shall exist. So the, this is the, the God and the grammar. Um, a lot of times people are getting caught up because they don't understand grammatically what's being expressed. Ehye asher ehye absolutely does not mean I am that I am. That is flat out incorrect. There's no wiggle room. There's no way to get around that. Ehye is a first person common imperfect conjugation of the verb haya. Ehye, I shall exist. The verb to be in the present tense is not attested within Hebrew or any other Semitic language. So you don't get that sense of I am that I am. That is not how it is written. And grammatically, that is incorrect to render it into English this way. It is absolutely, absolutely not I am that I am. Ehye esher ehye is a first person common singular imperfect conjugation of the verb to be expressing I shall be working in conjunction with the relative particle asher. I shall be as I shall be or I shall exist as I shall exist. F of X equals X. It's just that simple. Ehye esher ehye. I shall exist as I shall exist. And if I was to convey this to someone else, I would be compelled to utilize the third person attestation. Now, as it relates to how do we come up with the yod hey wo hey, what about that? Well, the yod hey wo hey is the conjugation of the verb to be in the third person, imperfect, but the conjugation reflects a different type of function. It is a causative conjugation from the hifil binyan, meaning that he shall cause to exist, which in essence is fundamentally different than he shall exist. This is saying that he shall cause to exist. So if I were to say, um, this simply says that he shall cause to exist as he shall cause to exist. Or I could say, which means he or it shall exist as it shall cause to exist or it shall cause to exist as it exists. But overwhelmingly, what the issue is, is an absence of understanding concerning grammar and how the semantic presentation is found in the grammar. And it cannot be avoided and it cannot be ignored. So to arbitrarily say that means I am that I am will not only bring about error and folly, it will cause a gross misunderstanding of the text and what is actually expressing. So first and foremost, Haya. He existed. Call third masculine singular perfect. Ehye. Call first person singular imperfect. I shall be. And again, if I am going to express that something is conveying to me that it shall exist and that conversation occurred in a first person, second person circumstance, it is saying I shall exist when I convey that information to someone else. It becomes a third person attestation. It shall exist. Yeah. So in short, the God is in the grammar.